Pastor Jeremy kicked off our new series called Rhythm last weekend, and I want to unpack rhythm this week, but we're going to be talking about the rhythm of rest. Everybody take a deep breath, but don't breathe too heavy because you're going to panic the people around you. Just be real. No, no, take a deep breath in. It's a miracle you're even breathing. It's a miracle you woke up again today, and you're breathing, which is proof that God's not done with you yet. Come on, you've already survived 100% of your worst days and you're still standing. So come on, rest in the Lord knowing just that, that he's still fighting for you. So last week, Pastor Jeremy talked about rhythm. He did this really cool illustration with the drums and talked about how the downbeat of the drums syncopates everything. So we can add melodies and we can add other musical instruments, but it all is built around the beat. The word rhythm actually means, the definition is a strong, regular, repeated pattern of movement or sound. So when we listen to a song and we experience a song or we watch a movie and we hear this amazing soundtrack, there's a sequence, a movement, a flow. There's a rhythm to the movement. It has a beginning, it has an end, and it continues, though, ultimately moving forward. And we can see all throughout the Bible that God is always on the move. So we're gonna talk about rhythm for just a moment. God is always on the move. Two-thirds of his name is actually Go. That's a little cheesy, but anyways. (laughs) And he has always lived up to this attribute. One of the most fascinating things about God's, God's movement is the consistency in his direction that he always moves forward. There's, this is why that he is far more interested in your future than your past. And, And your past is a part of your story, but stop looking back because you're not going that way any, anymore. In the rhythm of life, God is saying, listen, everything you do, Just keep moving forward. And we believe during this series, as we unlock different types of rhythm, as we unlock movement in our lives, we are praying and believing that you guys will find your stride and that you won't keep striving. You ever just, you find yourself striving, just just kind of going through the motions, almost cruise control. I have a friend who ran the uh, Boston Marathon barefoot. I'm like, why? You could have put on Crocs or something. (laughs) And he was talking about just speed, narrow dynamics. He couldn't walk for two weeks afterwards. I'm like, okay, I could have seen that one coming. But he talked about as a marathon runner, you can't strive or you'll wear yourself out. Where's all the runners at? Where's everybody? You run on purpose. I only run if somebody's chasing me. I don't. I told my wife I was thinking about getting calf implants so I look like a runner. I want people to be like, he obviously runs. Look at his calves. Um, Okay. Where's all the runners at? Wave at me if you're, okay, we're very, very cool. So how many of y'all wear Hoka's? Those are like the best running shoes I hear. Okay, cool, guy in the back, two hands and a foot lifted. He's a Hoka rep. <laughs> no, no, but he was talking about as a marathon runner, you have to find your stride. He said, I'll syncopate my steps to my breathing patterns and I have to find my stride or I can't get to the end because if I'm striving, I'll wear myself out, and completely do it in my own strength. And our prayer during this rhythm series is that you will find stride so that you don't constantly live in a state that seems worn out. We also are going to get to a point in this series where we recognize and we believe that God is working in our lives even if we don't feel or see it because spiritual growth, I want you to hear this, spiritual growth can be slow sometimes. It's one small step at a time. But here's the other reality, and I think that sometimes this is a misconception. God is not in a hurry. We are. So just so you know, God is not in a hurry. And this is why we we, we end up tired and stressed and anxious and disappointed because I believe so much of the time our attention is focused on our own strength and all the noise and uncertainty around us and there's a lot of it right now. But the reality is we have to learn the rhythm of resting in the Lord. The Bible says in Matthew 11, 28, this is Jesus' words, come to me all who are weary and burdened. Watch this, and I will give you rest. So today I pray that you will surrender your timeline in favor of God's sustaining peace and his supernatural rest. Our prayer during this rhythm series, and today again we're going to be talking about the rhythm of rest. We pray that you find your stride. If you're taking down notes, write that down. I'm going to find my stride. Come on. I'm going to get my groove back like Stella. Come on. <laughs> this might be baby steps for some. You may take a giant leap. Whatever you do, just keep moving forward and remember that the only direction designed for us as king's kids, as sons and daughters of the living God is forward. Hebrews chapter 12 verse one says this, and let us run with endurance. Now that sounds like, like fast. No, no, endurance isn't talking about speed. This isn't a sprint. Running with endurance is that marathon. It's that stride. It's locking into the grace and the pace 
of the Holy Spirit and the assignment that's on your life. Let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus. And with all that said, we're also in the middle of 21 days of prayer. How many guys have jumped in and you're a part of 21 days of prayer? Come on, 11 of you. This is super successful so far. Now, how many of y'all have been praying? Come on, you've been intentional, amazing. Uh, and it's not too late. We're only a weekend. You can still jump in. We're giving you resources every day. You can go on our Instagram, our Hope City Facebook page. We put a different devotional up there every single day. You can go. We're giving you the tools. Here's the reality. Make this a priority because if you have time to complain about it, you have time to pray about it. And we talk a lot, but it's time to get intentional with our prayer life. It's time to get intentional with our future and the assignment that God has on our lives. I love what Andy Stanley says. He says, you don't just end up drifting in a good direction. You prioritize yourself there. So look at the person next to you and say, make room for prayer. Come on, let them know. And here's the truth. As we unlock and we talk about this rhythm of rest, last weekend, Pastor Jeremy kicked off week one. He talked about restoration and he talked about healing. I encourage you to go back to the archives and watch last weekend and follow along and take down notes. But this weekend, as we talk about the rhythm of rest, I wanna unpack this a little bit because the truth is we all struggle a little bit. How many of y'all, like you love to sleep, like it's a big deal to you, like, what, like my sweet spot, and this is true, my sweet spot's about five hours. Like my wife's like, five hours? Now my wife, I don't know how many other moms are like this, my wife gets her second wind about quarter till uh, midnight every, every night. She gets the kids down, she's like, hey, you wanna watch a movie? I'm like, it's 11.45. I'm good for 15 minutes. We can just watch three trailers. If you're good to watch three trailers, I'm good. She gets her second win, but she's a sleeper. She used to enjoy, we used to just, I mean, she would sleep. She's like, if I could get nine, 10 hours, and then we have four kids, that's just not possible anymore. But how many of y'all like to sleep? Because where's all the, okay, cool. So we're gonna be talking about rest. There's some physical sides of that, but then we're also gonna be talking about resting in the Lord. So here, here's a few rest components. Rest is a necessary component to restoration. Pastor Jeremy last week talked about how the first part of restoration literally is rest. Rest is a necessary component also to preventing trauma. Pastor Jeremy, last weekend, unpacked trauma and trauma bonds. Rested people react with clarity because there is more in their social, spiritual, and emotional tank. Rest is in the Ten Commandments. Some of you are like, thou shalt not steal. And there's <laughs> kill in there. No, number four is remember the Sabbath. Literally, God is saying, hey, this is a day of rest. At Hope City, our staff, we take Mondays off. This is a day of rest because we believe that when we give God this one day of rest, he'll give us six days of supernatural strength. So we honor that as our Sabbath during the week is that Monday for us. Medically, the quality of your rest determines the pace of your healing. Think about it. A doctor will say, you need to go home and, and, and get, some, get some rest. Medically, determines this pace of your healing is based upon the quality of your sleep. Rest is triune because we are triune, spirit, soul, and body. Rest is not Netflix or merely sleeping in. Real rest is a calculated, targeted restoring of your spirit, your emotions, and your physical body. But here's the reality. You can be rested physically and completely spent emotionally. And then you'll find yourself unbalanced. You'll find yourself falling into brokenness and it messes with your joy, it messes with your strength, it messes with your peace. I remember a few years ago, this pastor called us and said, hey, I wanna bless like 12 pastor friends and we're gonna do this big, it's a check-in, check-up sort of marriage uh, thing with a therapist. And my wife and I are all about that. My wife's a counselor and she's like, let's do it. He's like, we're gonna talk about and unpack some blind spots. And so he sent us these tests the tests were two hours, and you had to use a pencil, and you had to circle in these little dots. And it was like, how do you resolve conflict? Do you like dark chocolate? I'm like, what? <laughs> how much ice cream do you eat? I'm like, wait a minute, is this, a, what are we doing right now? So it was like 300 questions, it took forever. I was like texting my friend Matt, I was like, do you think you could come do this test, Jack? He's like, no, you've gotta do the test. So about a week later, he had the results, and he met with us, and he said, first let me just tell you, this therapist, he said, first let me tell you, you guys have a very healthy marriage. We said, I said, thank you. And he said, uh, there are a couple blind spots. I'm like, really? <laughs> I didn't expect that. He's like, he loves chocolate. I'm like, okay. That was, you did put that in there. And he goes, no, here's the thing. You are very driven. He said, you probably don't need caffeine. I said, yeah, sleep about five hours a night. I wake up. I have five shots of espresso, amen. <laughs> but, 
But, but no, the truth is I'm very driven. I have an on switch and an off switch. That's it, I'm on. And he said, the reality is you don't know how to rest. It was frustrating. I'll be honest. I'm like, you don't know me. The 300 premium questions that I was circling in. But the reality is I didn't understand what rest was. I was just driving and waking up 120 mile an hour all the time. And he said, I want to prescribe something to you. He pulls out his little doctor pad, starts writing a prescription. I say, hey man, I know I got some OCDs and I need to sleep, but I- I'm good. And he rips it off and hands it to me. And it says, silent, solitude, three day retreat. He said, I want to encourage you to go take a three day trip that is just in complete silence and solitude where you say nothing, you don't even pray out loud, you're just quiet and you rest. So I called a friend of mine, like, this is crazy, I definitely don't wanna do this. And he was like, man, I got this cabin up in Michigan, up in the Upper Peninsula, it's beautiful, you should just come up. So I flew in and I got in there, and I'll be honest, the first 10, the first 10 hours, I was like, Whew. Because here's the truth, I, I'm, I'm old enough to know what it's like to not have technology. And there's this thing we used to talk about, it's called boredom. How many of you have ever experienced that? <laughs> the new digital natives are like boredom. Is that when my Wi-Fi isn't working and my gram doesn't load in like three seconds? I'm like, ah, how many likes did I get? It's like that except multiplied by a lot more. Like it's just a lot. So the first 10 hours, I was super bored. I was like, but I couldn't make any noise. And then about 25, 26 hours in, I started feeling the weight of it. About 36 hours in, the clock hand, the hand on the clock was like click. It was so loud, I was like, how do I remove, can I just break the clock, like how do I? But I ended up finding my rhythm. And I remember sitting down in the chair and opening up the Bible, I ended up reading over 90 chapters in the Bible. Clearing my throat sounded loud, like it was unbelievable. But for three days, I just, I spent in complete silence and solitude in the presence of God. And the, the Lord began to download some things to me and as I leaned in and I recognized the importance of entering into this place of rest, He began to renew and restore and do some healing in me and put stitches where I'd been putting Band-Aids. And I'm literally living in the harvest of those three days even now. I'm still leading out of that place. I'm still being a good husband and a good father out of that place. And the truth is when I leaned in and chose to really rest and find that rhythm of rest, God was able to really get my attention. Because here's the truth, I wanna say this, I've said it before, God is always speaking. The Holy Spirit is always speaking. But the truth is we allow so many distractions and so much stuff filling our calendars and distracting us and muddying the waters of our ability to listen that we don't realize he's always speaking. So my wife's like, I think you should go. And I remember calling my friend. He's like, you know, Jesus did this. So it's in the word, Mark chapter one, verse 35. Watch this. Very early in the morning, this is what compelled me to actually go. While it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Because y'all, here's the truth. It's only getting noisier. And the noise of this modern world almost makes it uh, 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 impossible to hear the voice of God. It, it drowns out the true input that we need most, and that's the voice of God in our lives. And the truth is, that type of rest we're talking about is only found in his presence. If you wanna find rest, if you wanna unlock the rhythm of rest in your life, some of y'all are gonna have to stop watching the news so much. Amen. Turning it on too much. The constantly negative news all the time. Just... The fear is is everywhere. You're gonna have to get off social media. Some of y'all are living on TikTok. Some of y'all are living on the Instagram. You're literally going, if you go to your iPhone, I can't speak to the droid friends. You're still welcome here, but (laughs) you're still welcome. I just can't speak to this. But on the iPhone, it tells you your screen time. That's a little sobering. You're like, I didn't spend nine hours a day on my phone. Some of y'all are gonna have to turn off social media. You're gonna have to turn off toxic voices in your life Because what ends up happening is, watch this, it robs you of your ability to be present with God. It robs you of your ability to be present for other people. It robs you of your ability to be present in all that is good and true and still beautiful in this world. And it robs you of even being present for yourself. Some of you are like, Daniel, that's amazing that you were able to go up to the UP and do a little three-day find myself retreat. I can't do that. I have no margin in my calendar, but you can be intentional every day. You can be intentional. We give you tools here at Hope City and we give you the first 15 challenge. Five minutes in worship, five minutes in word, five minutes in prayer every day. God can do more in 15 minutes than you can do in a lifetime. But the truth is it's not about quantity, it's about that quality time in his presence. You wanna rest, get in 
his presence every single day. I was talking to my friend Josh, who's on our team here, and we were talking about how a lot of times, maybe subconsciously, we don't even know that we, we step into rest and we don't even realize it. Like when you come home, maybe you have to wear a uniform or maybe you're a business person, you gotta wear a suit. When you walk into your house, you don't just leave what you were wearing at work on all day. You don't just walk in and be like, I'm literally just gonna wear this and go straight to bed. Now, some of you, you walk in and your PJs are already sitting there. You like jump in a onesie, right? When you walk in the door. Because the truth is you you disconnect from what has been stressing you out. You disconnect from work. You are casting off what you were wearing that day and almost like placing a coat on a coat rack. True rest is found when you allow God to hold the weight that you've been carrying. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 7 that we are to cast all of our cares. This is literally like taking off the stress and replacing it with a garment of praise. All your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns once and for all on him. For he cares about you with deepest affection and watches over you very carefully. So I was raised in a house that would say, because we were a lot of self-starters, startup businesses, and we were driven all the time. And my grandpa would say, I'll rest when I die. How many have ever heard that before? I'll rest when I'm under the ground. And, and we, I kind of had this misconception that rest was laziness. But I've learned in the rhythm of rest that rest is a power move. Pace is proof of maturity. And when you pace yourself and you recognize that God is with you and fighting for you, there is a rest in knowing that you don't have to do it in your own strength. And uh, here's the truth. The wind is rarely uh, at our back making life easier. The truth is it's usually in your face making you stronger. So you have to have a pace and you have to find your stride so that you can continue to get stronger. God gave Moses a directive and gave him some clarity on the assignment that he had for him. And he told him, he said, listen, my presence is gonna be with you and inside of this covering of my presence, you will have rest. Exodus 33, 14 says, the Lord replied, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. We talked about sleeping earlier. How many of y'all are nappers? Like you like to nap, like it's a big deal. Okay, cool, cool. So I'm not a big napper. Like my wife yesterday was like, hey, you need to take a nap. I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, you're kind of snappy. You should take a nap. I'm like, you're snappy. Go make me a sandwich. She's like, you go make me a sandwich. And then you go take a nap. So I made her a sandwich and then I went and got in bed. So the truth is when it comes to napping, uh, there's, there's the naps that are a little, like you didn't get enough of a nap. And then there's the balance of like, well, there's too much. Like for me, like a 30 minute power nap, I'm good. Like if I can doze off on a plane, I'm good. But if my wife's like, he needs sleep. And then like she did yesterday and woke me up 90 minutes. Y'all, I woke up like a different person. I didn't even know my name. Like I just was fussy and just up. 90 minutes is too much. And then you got people that are like, oh, Saturdays, I love naps. I slept for four and a half hours. I'm like, you should have just slept into the next day. That's not a nap. You, that's called night. You were sleeping. Like they're doing a sleep study on you. That is a... But as a parent, uh, my, my wife and I recognize as parents of our four kids when they need a break. So our two-year-old, you can tell. I'm like, either he's tired or he's manifesting a demon. There's something going on. <laughs> And so we'll say, Fox, you got to go to bed. He'll be like, no nap. He doesn't want to take a nap. But as soon as you lay him down, because we as his parents, me as his father and Jackie as his mom, we know when he needs to take a nap. We know when he needs rest. Pastor Jeremy last week in reference Psalms 23. I'm going to tie all this together. Watch this. The Lord is my shepherd. Verse one, I lack nothing. Verse two is huge. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters and he refreshes my soul. Verse two is key. It's all about rest. He makes us lie down. He knows as a father, like I do with my kids, what we need when we need it. Close your eyes for just a moment at home, Cinco, Woodlands, West Houston. Just close your eyes. Nobody's, nobody's gonna take your stuff. Just close your eyes for a minute. Just rest. I want you to just take a minute. Just take a minute and just breathe. Just rest for a minute. Some of y'all are so consumed by tomorrow and so consumed by your to-do list and so consumed by checking the boxes and so consumed by crossing T's and dot and I's, you haven't even taken a moment just to rest. God, today I pray that the power of your spirit, like a blanket of peace, would begin to wrap each and every person 
up in your rest, God, that we would unlock the spirit of rest would be unlocked today in our lives, our families, and that we would leave better and refreshed today. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. amen. Psalm 62, one, verse two says, truly my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from him. He is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. And I wanna say this for a moment because maybe last month during the relationship series, maybe during Strings Attached, how many of y'all enjoyed Strings Attached? Like it was awesome. And maybe you walked out excited and refreshed and fired up, and maybe you left and you realized there was some healing and some blind spots. Maybe you left kind of burdened. Maybe you left shaken, and maybe you left with some anxiety. I just wanna encourage you to rest. Don't, don't try to make these life-altering decisions in a moment, but rather rest in the Lord and allow God to comfort your worries directly. I think that's one of the most amazing things that we have in the love of our God. It's like the love from a daddy to a daughter, a father to a son, that he meets you where you're at. So there was a lot of great information, a lot of things that were encouraging, a lot of things that revealed some blind spots and some areas that you needed stitches and healing in. But the truth is God will meet you where you're at. So I just want you to be encouraged as we continue throughout this rhythm series to rest in the Lord and allow the Holy Spirit to bring you peace directly. The Bible says in Isaiah 61, three, I mentioned a moment ago, it talks about replacing heaviness, re replacing the burdens of life with a garment of praise. And when you really begin to walk in this rhythm of rest, you'll also start walking in your purpose. There was a season in my life uh, where I was anxious about everything. Like I was pretty pessimistic. I'd wake up on Monday and be like, ugh, another week. But honestly, I was kind of raised that way. My mom loves Mondays. There's a lot of optimism in my family, but the truth is I kind of had a half glass empty. I kind of had a pessimistic approach. I kind of had a negative approach. And the, re the reality is I started realizing that my focused attention was on my condition, my struggles, my stress, and I was making it all about me. And the Bible says in Philippians chapter four, verse six and seven, it says, do not be anxious about anything. I was anxious about everything. It says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Verse seven, and the peace of God, I love this, which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus. We encourage y'all here at Hope City to take down notes. So if you have the ability to take down notes, uh, pull out your device and get ready to write this down. If you've already been taking down notes, amazing. If, you wanna, if you're old school and you just have a piece of paper, elbow the person next to you and borrow an eyeliner, just take down notes. But I want you to write this down because I think this is huge and it's heavy, but watch. Number one, we have to stop walking in our condition and start walking in our position. You wanna unlock the rhythm of rest in your life? Recognize that you're a daughter and a son of the living God. God doesn't look at you and call you damaged goods and fragile. It does not mean that you are free from flaws and weaknesses. We all deal with them. But the truth is he calls you a daughter. He calls you a son. And there's one fundamental way that I wanna unpack here just for a moment about how we can walk in our position and not our condition. It doesn't mean you're not gonna have struggles and storms and issues, but there's this, old, uh, there's this old adage, and I remember my mom would tell me, she'd be like, buddy, buddy, you're letting this bother you too much. You need to let it just roll off you like water off a duck's back. I'm like, okay, Riddler, what are we talking about? All those country sayings? But the reality is this, a duck has an oil in its feather. Its feather, so when it rains, it's like built-in rain -X, and it just beads up and rolls right off of them. See, when you wear the whole armor of God every day and you put on that spiritual armor, not real armor, you put on real armor, you'll go to jail. Like, don't. <laughs> <laughs> but spiritual armor every day, and we're gonna unpack it. When you put on that spiritual armor every day, you can walk in your position, no longer your condition. Ephesians chapter six says this in verse 13 through 17, therefore put on the full armor of God. So when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, the breastplate of righteousness in place with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. 16, in addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith for which will extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. 17, and take on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. 
See, every day when you put on the armor of God, the one I wanna focus on today, because we're talking about rest, is the feet readiness, the feet of peace that you put on. Literally, when you put on the armor of God and you put on the feet of peace, it literally empowers you to walk in a spirit of rest. So when you walk into a room, the atmosphere changes because you have been with Jesus. Again, you're walking in your position. You're not walking in your condition. When you wear that armor of God every day, the power of God's spirit is present with you and ultimately through you. If there's anything that we pick up when reading the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the New Testament is that Jesus was rarely in a hurry. Can you imagine a stressed out Jesus? Like, like think about it. Like he walks in, he's like to Mary Magdalene, like, where's my hummus, Maggie? <laughs> Can you imagine he's like, hey, I wanna, I wanna come pray uh, for you to be healed, but I gotta jump on a plane and do a TED Talk over in Jerusalem. Like, yeah, but I don't have time, but here's uh, my assistant Judas's card. He'll, he'll help you. No, it was the opposite. J Jesus was actually intentional with everyone in every moment. And when we look at the steps Jesus took, we also notice that he didn't always take her Actually, he never took the fastest route except when he walked on the water. That was the time that he was like, I gotta get to the boat. No, 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 but he went out of his way and we see it all throughout scripture. He went out of his way to minister to the one, whether it was the grieving mother in Luke 7, the Samaritan woman at the well, in John 4, Jairus' daughter in Mark 5. In Mark 10, when he came across and walked by and stopped to heal blind Bartimaeus or Matthew chapter nine, verse 20, when he got in the way of the woman with the issue of blood's uh, uh, storm, he got in the way of her storm and just came by her path, just got in the way of her struggle and her situation, and she was completely made whole. Jesus didn't try to fit more in because he remembered why he was here. He walked in his purpose. He walked in his position. The Bible says in Luke chapter four, and when it was the day, he departed and went over to a desolate place, and the people sought and came to him, they kept, they kept him from leaving. He said to them, listen, I must go preach the good news of the kingdom of God to other towns as well. And he said this line, for I was sent for this purpose. See, Jesus did more than just walk with purpose. He walked in his purpose and he gave us a great example to follow. So I'm gonna ask you this question. Are you walking in your purpose? Are you walking in your purpose? Because if you're so stressed and you're so full of anxiety and you have no peace and you're just surviving life, how can you really walk in your purpose? That's why here at Hope City, we say it all the time, we want you to know God, not as a religious experience, but in relationship. We want you to find freedom so that God can heal, restore, and deliver you. We want you to discover your purpose because we believe that every single person has a purpose on this planet, and then ultimately we want you to make a difference. But the truth is we are in such a hurry so much of the time that we miss moments God had for us, and we miss out on moments that we were supposed to maybe help somebody else. Say out loud, I wanna walk in my purpose. Come on, let me hear you say it. Let me say this, this is gonna be for somebody. Everything is not a part of your assignment. Some of y'all are just busy and it's not your business. I'm gonna say it again, not everything is a part of your assignment. That's why you're so tired. You're so busy all the time, your calendar is filled, but it's none of your business. And I want to encourage you today, my wife and I do this all the time, we sit down frequently and we talk about things that we can eliminate on our calendar and things that we can eliminate that's not connected to our assignment. But this comes with prayer and the leading and the directive of the Holy Spirit. That's why 21 days of prayer is so important. God will pull weeds and you can allow him to pull some weeds which makes room ultimately for some seed. And I believe this month, if you will lean in, God will unlock some amazing things. Can somebody say amen? The Bible says in Isaiah 28, 16, therefore says the Lord, behold, I am the one who is laid as a foundation, a stone, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. Watch this. And whoever believes, so we build our life, we build everything that we do here. And Christianity here at Hope City is built on the rock. It's built on the foundation of Jesus. Whoever believes will not be in haste. The definition of the word haste is hurry. Urgency, excessive speed. You know that one person that just, they're always walking really fast all the time. Do you notice at the Olympics this year, there's actually a speed walking competition? This is unbelievable. I was with Pastor Jeremy. He walks so fast. We were at this restaurant the other day. I couldn't catch him. Like he, he's shorter than me, but he walks at like 20 mile an hour. Like he was so, I was like, come on, Pastor Jeremy, I'm trying to catch you. It was unbelievable. 
But a lot of times that's, that's me and our relationship, like Jackie and I, and she'll be like, why are you in such a hurry? The movie doesn't start for 20 more minutes. I'm like, we gotta get there. The truth is I started recognizing in different areas of my life when I'm talking about the rhythm and the pace and the stride in my life, I asked myself this question. I told my wife last night, I said, does my pace, does my pace reveal that I'm resting in God or depending on me? Does my pace, my calendar, my urgency, my inability to sit down and just color with my five-year-old, does my pace represent and look like I'm resting in God or am I depending on me? Because I've learned in my life over the past 20 years of ministry, I've learned that when I rush it, I ruin it. When I rush it, I get in the way. That's why I've learned to pause, pray, and be patient. That's a word for somebody. And when you walk in the rhythm of rest and grace, you will find your stride. And you'll start noticing that your life will begin to come into alignment. I just got, Brandy Tyrus put on my wife's uh, Yukon the other day, and, and they did a nice alignment on it. And when you rest in the presence of God, when you lean into the presence of God, when you lean into things like this 21 days of prayer, and in January when we do 21 days of prayer and fasting, y'all got to lay down the Oreos. When you lean into his presence, it's almost like a supernatural alignment. You lock into the rhythm of rest. Alignment determines assignment. Assignment starts with God. Alignment starts with us. So number one, we're gonna stop walking in our condition and start walking in our position and another way to unlock the rhythm of rest in our lives, number two, we have to, this is tough, we have to relinquish control. Proverbs chapter three, verse five and six says, trust in the Lord with a little bit of your heart. It doesn't say that. Trust in the Lord with a few things. No, it says with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding and in all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. The truth is we have to live open-handed. The truth is, if you want to stop being so stressed and worn out and overtaken and overwhelmed, you have to live a life that's surrendered. You have to live a life that relinquishes control. And when we truly find this rhythm of rest and we begin to walk in this, it's also a walk of faith because faith requires us to relinquish control, to release the burden, to place the confidence and expectation in Jesus, not ourselves. And here's the truth. The pressure is then off of your shoulders because you recognize, I can't fix this. I can't restore this. I can't deliver this. I can't even level up. Only God can do this. And when you begin to lean into his presence and you begin to release the struggle and the control, I pray right now, I don't know who this is for, but if you struggle with control issues, you haven't been experiencing, because statistically when you struggle with control issues, you struggle with rest. My prayer this weekend is that you would release that, relinquish control, and enter into a rhythm of rest. Last but not least, as we bring us in for a landing, number three, this is huge. This is gonna mess with somebody. We have to allow God to mess up our plans. Come on. I heard this saying, you, you wanna make God laugh, tell him your plans. Because the truth is, I'm not talking about God's plan for your life. I'm talking about, like, God, I know you are you know, smart enough and big enough and you created everything. You shaped me, molded me in your image and you told the water where to stop and the sun's the star and the moon. I get all that, but I got it. I'll take care of this one. No, no, the truth is we're talking about God's plan for your life. Proverbs 16, 9 says, in their hearts, humans determine their course. Like, oh my God, I've got it figured out. No, no, no. But the Lord establishes their steps. And when we follow our own plans, we get things out of sync. Things just don't connect right. When we get in the way, what ends up happening is we mess up that syncopation, that rhythm. There was a, there was, um, there was a season where I was, I, I'm always, I've always been driven. We've, we've talked about that. But right before, uh, right before a massive decision I was about to make, I was just dealing with a lot of heaviness and, and, and anxiety. And I went to my parents and I was like, hey, I really feel like everything I've been working so hard for is my next step. And my mom's like, Daniel, I don't, I don't know if this is God's plan for your life. And I'm like, yes, it is. So some of you didn't know, but I, so in high school, I played basketball. I was going overseas to play ball. I had an opportunity right out of high school to go overseas. And, and I was fired up. So y'all didn't know I had it like, I don't like that. So I, I go to this worship night, the night before I'm supposed to fly out. And the pastor gets up in front of like 2,500 college students and he's like, there's somebody in the room right now and you do not have direction. And, and God wants to align some things in your heart. And, you, and he took, me, took us to that verse, Proverbs 16, 9, in their hearts, 
Humans determine their course, but God has not been leading your steps. I want you to get out of your seat and come meet me down here right now. So I'm like, there's 2,500 other college students that we're all confused, you know what I mean? <laughs> y'all, this is a true story. I got out of my seat, no one else moved. I'm like, oh, so you're very, y'all, you're super saved. <laughs> oh, so you really know the voice of God. Nobody else has struggles? You, I was the only person, true story. I go all the way to the front, the pastor said, wow, God would stop this entire service for you. But here's the truth, I would not be standing here today if I wouldn't have stepped out in that moment. I allowed God to mess up my plans and I went to the front and God called me. In that moment, I literally felt the Lord say, I've called you to do evangelism through worship. All you have to do is get in the way of people's storms and point them to me. And God literally began to show me what was next. I ended up going to Bible college. I stepped into a whole different plan. It was, it was his plan. So afterwards, I go to this restaurant and I'm hanging out with my friends. I was like, guys, I think I'm gonna wait. I don't, I don't think I'm gonna go overseas. I think I'm gonna go to Bible college. I, I, I feel like all of this has been me. But God showed me some stuff tonight. So on our way out, my friend's like, I think I know those girls. And we go and we start talking to them and they're like, oh yeah, we were at the night of worship, true story. The girl's like, oh, aren't you that guy that needed deliverance? I'm like, no, direction. <laughs> I needed, to... she's like, it's cool. I'm like, no, it's du- I needed direction. <laughs> ah. So last Friday, 22 years ago, last Friday, my wife and I took a pic in front of a place called Cheddar's. Because 22 years ago, I met a girl at Cheddar's and 17 years later, on that night, we got married. 17 years later, we're married, four kids. I didn't get married on that night. We met on that night. Some of you are like, wow, God did a lot on that day. <laughs> no, it was 22 years ago. It was Jackie, it was her first weekend at college. We met that night, and we ended up on the journey together at the same church together, and God messed up my plans. And now 17 years later, four kids later, look at what God has done. I'm here in Houston, Texas at Hope City because God, God messed up my plans. This verse is for somebody. Proverbs chapter three, verse six through nine says, listen for God's voice in everything you do. Everywhere you go, he's the one that will keep you on track. Watch this. Don't assume you know it all. That's where my issue was. And then it says, run to God. Another translation says, cling to God. Stand your feet with with me, if you would. God, today my prayer, if you'll lift your hands towards heaven in the words of our Savior Jesus, again in Matthew 18, with your eyes closed, come to me, all who are weary, who carry heavy loads, who are carrying burdens, and I will give you rest. God, I pray today that you would unlock rest in marriages. God, that you would unlock rest in broken places, that you would unlock rest in hopeless situations, that you would unlock rest in the middle of that diagnosis, that you would unlock rest in the middle of that anxiety, that depression, that insecurity and concern, that you would unlock rest in the middle of that that noise and uncertainty, that fear, that timidity and concern. God, I pray that you would unlock rest. God, replace panic attacks with rest. Replace that hopeless feeling with rest. Re- replace that, that noise of what if the doctors say it's cancer? What if the doctors say it's this with supernatural rest that says, I'm the great physician, I'm the healer. God, I pray that the power of your spirit would meet every person where they're at here at West Houston, Cinco, the Woodlands online. God, I pray for a spirit of rest. The reality is it says to run to God In his presence is everything you need. In his presence is all the peace, all the clarity, all the perseverance, the fight, the joy, the wisdom, everything you need when you need it. The rest, the rhythm of rest is found in his arms. And nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do, cause I just want, come on sing that out, sing, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else, Come on, will you lift your hands and declare, I just want you and nothing else. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else with you. Come on.
to start walking in your position, not your condition. Start relinquishing control. And for somebody, I know this hit. For somebody, you need to allow God to mess up your plans because you've just been getting in the way and you've been overwhelmed with stress and anxiety and concern. But find that rhythm of rest today as God begins to unlock clarity and purpose in your life. With every eye closed, just for a moment, if you're in the room at Cinco, at Woodlands, watching online, you're at West Houston, you say, Daniel, here's the truth, I've never experienced rest because I don't know Jesus. The Bible says in Romans 10, verse nine and 10, that when we confess with our mouth and we believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. Everything changes. Anytime Jesus got in the way of anybody's storm, we talked about it today, their story changed. Or maybe you're here and you say, Daniel, the truth is, I got caught up in the prodigal life and I, I fell away. And today's the day that I wanna rededicate my life. I'm gonna count to three here at Hope City. We will never embarrass you. It's God's job to change you, but we wanna walk with you so that you can be discipled. If you wanna experience true rest, it's found in the foundation of Jesus. One, I wanna give my life to Jesus. Two, I wanna rededicate my life. Three, if that's you, would you lift up your hand? Hands are going up all over West Houston. I know they're going up right now at Cinco, the Woodlands. Come on, lift up your hand, lift up your hand. If that's you, Daniel, today's the day, today's the day. Our moderators right now on our online campus, you can say yes to Jesus. They're gonna walk that out with you right now. Yes to Jesus right now. All right, I want everybody to pray this prayer with me. Say, Jesus, it's me. I've been living for me and it hasn't worked. From today on, I choose to live for you. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for restoring me as I enter in to your supernatural rest. From this moment on, I'm gonna live for you. For you are my Father, you are my Savior, and you are my Lord, in Jesus' name.